What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering the last of the base battle rifles. This is the FTAC Recon. And starting it off, as always, let's have a look at our damage profile. And just like with well, all of the other battle rifles, we have totally different damage profiles in semi-auto versus full auto. And in semi-auto, this is going to be a 2 to 4 shot kill, although generally speaking, it's going to be more like a 2 to 3 shot kill if you're not hitting a lot of limb shots at range. And it is also worth noting, we do have a one shot headshot potential within our maximum damage range, and that's something I really love about the FTAC Recon. As for our rate of fire cap in semi-auto mode, this is 500 rounds per minute, and what this means is our time to kill potential with a two shot kill is just 120 milliseconds, which is insanely fast, and even with a three shot kill, it's 240 milliseconds, which is still within the realm of being a competitive time to kill, especially at longer ranges, that's actually a very, very good time to kill. Also, of course, if you do hit that headshot up close, it's literally instant when it comes to our time to kill. Now, when we switch the FTAC Recon over to full auto mode, it's now going to be a 3 to 5 shot kill, although again, as long as you're not mixing in a lot of limb shots at range, it's generally going to be a 3 to 4 shot kill. And we lose that one shot headshot potential, but headshots are still great in full auto mode because one single headshot will almost always reduce the number of shots to kill, which is really helpful. As for a rate of fire in full auto mode, this is just a little bit faster than the semi-auto fire cap at 550 rounds per minute. And what this means is with a three shot kill, our time to kill is going to be 218 milliseconds. Whereas with a four shot kill, it will kill in 327 milliseconds. It's also worth noting if we mix a headshot in up close, we can get a two shot kill for a time to kill potential of 109 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast. Next up, let's have a look at the range comparison here in both semi-auto as well as full auto mode. And it turns out just like with the other battle rifles, the damage drop-off points are exactly the same. So they do have the same range values. They're just dealing different damages within those ranges. And you can see there our two shot kill potential in semi-auto and three shot kill potential in full auto will extend out to about 42 and a half meters. And that's very impressive. That's gonna cover the vast majority of gunfights you'll typically find yourself in within the 6v6 maps of this game. As for our idle sway, there's definitely a decent amount of sway here. This may affect that first shot accuracy. And if you are trying to hit those headshots, for instance, at range, this could come into play. But then let's have a look at our recoil. First up in semi-auto mode, you can see it's pretty tight there. And then in full auto, we've obviously got a little bit more recoil. Again, I believe the recoil values are technically the same regardless of the fire mode. But since we are firing a little bit slower in semi-auto, we're gonna be seeing less overall recoil because there's more time to recenter between shots. But overall, either in semi or full auto, it's quite an accurate gun. Although there's often a pretty big jump between the first and second shot fired. And that's something you definitely have to be aware of with this gun. After that though, let's have a look at our hip fire spread. And as we can see here, it's just standard for battle rifles and honestly not too bad at all. In close quarter situations, you can definitely hip fire effectively with this. And then let's get into our bullet velocity, which is unfortunately the slowest in the battle rifle category by a noticeable margin. All the other battle rifles have a bullet velocity of 660 meters per second. With the FTAC Recon, it's 480 meters per second. And that may affect your ability to hit moving targets at longer ranges. And it may also just make your hit detection feel worse as you start stretching out the range. As for our handling stats, our aim down sight speed is a little bit faster than average at 263 milliseconds. Whereas our sprint to fire time is pretty much standard for a battle rifle at 210 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time and 310 milliseconds for our tactical sprint out time. Then let's have a look at our reload add time, which is very fast. It's the fastest in the battle rifle category at 1.33 seconds. This is a great little upside to using this gun, especially since it does have a small magazine capacity at just 10 rounds. Then finally for our base stats, let's have a look at our mobility and our base movement speed as well as our sprint movement speed. They're both within the realm of average, nothing really out of the ordinary here. However, our aim walking movement speed is actually noticeably better than average for the battle rifle category. But having said that, this is still quite a slow aim walking speed in general. And therefore, you're probably not going to be able to take advantage of this a whole lot, even though it is better than the other battle rifles. And that wraps it up for the base stats of this gun. Now let's get into some of the attachments and we'll start it off with barrels and how they affect our ranges. And as we can see here, the first barrel will increase our ranges by 20%, which is a nice boost. Whereas the second one only gives us a 10% boost. The third barrel doesn't change our range values at all. And then finally with that seven and a half inch Tempest Firebrand barrel, this one will reduce our ranges by about 17%, which is very noticeable. 
Then let's have a look at how these barrels impact our recoil. And honestly, they don't seem to really change our recoil a ton with this gun. However, the Tempest Trench Pro Barrel does seem to add more magnitude to our recoil, as well as a bit more randomness in our recoil plots. And on top of that, with that 7.5 inch Tempest Firebrand Barrel, while the total magnitude seems not bad compared to the base recoil, the big thing you want to focus on there is that jump between the first and second shot fired. It seems like there's more inconsistency with that. And that can be really difficult recoil to handle with that first shot recoil. So just a couple things to be aware of there. But then finally for barrels, let's have a look at our aim down sight speeds. And as we can see here, the first two barrels will harm our aim down sight speed. The Bull Rider is the worst at 350 milliseconds, whereas the second two barrels improve our aim down sight speed. The Trench Pro barrel, not by a large margin, you probably wouldn't even notice that change. Whereas with that seven and a half inch barrel, that's a very noticeable improvement to our aim down sight speed. And going off of that, I also wanted to show you guys the aim down sight speeds with the different magazine attachments. With a five round mag, it cuts our aim down sight time down to 235 milliseconds. Whereas the 15 round mag will add a little bit of aim down sight time at 290 milliseconds. Honestly, that's still fairly reasonable, I would say. And with that, that wraps it up for all of the important stats that I wanted to cover for this gun. Now let's get into some excellent attachment combinations I've got for you guys. And the first one I'm going to share is my favorite way to run the attack recon. This is just my all arounder sort of a build. So with this, we have the XRK Kraken muzzle. This one helps with the vertical recoil, which is most needed on this gun, in my opinion, especially because of that first shot recoil. We want to get that under control as much as possible. We've also got the Commando foregrip to help a little bit with our stabilization with the recoil. We've got the OLEV laser, the Slimline Pro optic, because I'm not a big fan of the iron sights on this gun, and the Demo Fade Pro stock. With this particular build, our aim down sight speed is slower than the base, but not that bad at 310 milliseconds. Our sprint out time is also improved a little bit, not by a super large margin, but it's a bit better. And our recoil is definitely better than the base recoil on this gun. It's a lot easier to manage and control this. And as a result, we just get a nice overall balanced build in my opinion. When you're up close and personal in that maximum damage range between zero and 18 meters, you definitely want to try to hit those headshots if you're using it in semi-auto. But honestly, if you guys want to use this gun in full auto as well, I still think it's a great gun to use in full auto. And I don't think I'd even change the setup here at all. I'd use the exact same thing. And while that is my favorite way to run the F-TAC Recon and generally the build that I'm going to be using, I also wanted to share a longer range build for you guys. So with this, we have a lot of the same attachments. We still have the XRK Kraken Muzzle and the Commando Foregrip. These two in combination just seem to give us the best recoil control. We also once again have that OLEV laser, although this time we're using the 419 millimeter EXF barrel. This is the one that gives us the 20% range boost, which is great. And it also helps with our bullet velocity a bit, which is really nice to see with this gun since it does lack a little in that area and it helps with our recoil slightly as well. And with this, unfortunately, our aim down sight time is quite slow at 390 milliseconds, but for a long range build, that's okay. You don't really need to worry as much about aim down sight speed. Instead, we want to look more at recoil, and our recoil is generally looking pretty good here with this particular build. I would, however, recommend keeping this one in semi-auto so you can really control that and make sure you're landing every one of your bullets. And if you do that, you should be able to find a good amount of success at like mid to somewhat longer ranges with this particular setup. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the F-TAC Recon. As for my thoughts on this gun, I love it. I think this is actually one of my favorite semi-auto guns to use in the entire game. It's so satisfying getting that one-shot kill to the head up close, or even just the really quick two taps are really, really satisfying. And I just find it a little bit easier to manage and control compared to the Lockman 762 in semi-auto mode. Now, of course, those are just my thoughts on the FTAC Recon, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this gun in the comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes, we've now covered all assault rifles, all SMGs, and all of the battle rifles. I will leave a link to the playlist down below, and we will be moving on to the LMG category next. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.